agenda changes. We have two additional items under new business, um, H and I. Awards and recognition. Um, a motion to accept the resignation, be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education for the Trumansburg Central School District hereby accepts the resignation as presented for Susan Frost, music teacher, retirement June 30th of this year, and Sarah Seifert, middle school nurse, um, retirement also June 30th of this year. Um, Susan has been an employee and music teacher um, in the elementary school and middle school for primarily the elementary school for 25 years, and Sarah Seifert has been the middle school nurse for uh, 14 years. <laughs> so may I have a motion to accept those resignations? So moved. Second. Okay. Those discussion, questions? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, yes. A lot of dedicated service there. Um, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Gary, if I could just share Susan's last elementary musical will be this Thursday night at 7. Okay. And it is? It is the Emperor's Clothing. Oh. Of the bank. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Thank you very much. Is that the only showing? Ah, uh, yes. One time Thursday evening? Don't miss it, yes. Seven o'clock? Seven o'clock. Perfect. Thank you very much. Presentations. Hello again. <laughs> it's business yes. administrator time of the year. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. Unfortunately, it's also wait for the governor to and the runs and the everybody to tell us where the money's gonna be. We know that it's uh, well I'll start with this first. And then um, we'll talk about where the money comes from later, right? Because it's always the easy part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, well, what we've done, we started with very preliminary numbers to get a heads up on some things before. So what we've, what I've done is gone through and we've gotten some better information on the health insurance. Um, instead of a 10% increase, we're now looking at about a 7% increase. And if you cross your fingers, it'll go down a little bit more when they finalize the numbers. I think in March, they said they would finalize them. So, but so right now, 7% is a high water mark, as they call it. Uh, workman's comp, um, I didn't talk about last week, but for two years, um, we've had very high modifier. What the high modifier means is that for three years previous, we had some higher claims that came in and so when you're not putting in as much as you're getting out, then they adjust you and you absorb a little more risk. And that resulted in um, probably a 20%, 20 or 25% increase this current year and another 8.5% going into next year. Hopefully that will smooth over and, and come back to something um, less two or three years from now. Um, teachers' retirement, I went through the, um, a lot of the calculations again. Um, picking up some of the staff in the grants because in the grants we carry the salaries we don't carry the benefits so um, they'll see some increases and, and as I continue to go through and make sure we have everyone accounted for um, that should be a, a pretty good number so security taxes go up employment re um, sorry I skipped employees retirement um, that those rates really aren't going up it's just the base is going up because it's a percentage of the salaries and because we gave increases, that's going to increase how much we have to pay into the system. And then Social Security is the same thing. The rates stay the same, but the base goes up, so we have to pay a little more. Um, and then there are some other adjustments in there right now. So uh, basically for administration fees for our flex plan, dental plan, and unemployment, we raised unemployment because we were budgeted a little, a little lower than what we've experienced this year. So we're looking at close to $500,000 increase just in benefits right now. Um, just the central office administration, basically co contract increases. We're not, we haven't taken, and BOCES increases too, but I didn't mention it. It's not quite as significant. 
Um, we have so few services with BOCES at the administrative or at that uh, administrative level. Um, so as far as just the central office, the, the legal fees and the insurance coverages and all those are at this point almost twenty thousand dollars of increases. Debt service is good news. Um, good news, which is just saved it for last. You all those other pieces. I'll save a couple tidbits for, for good news. Uh, the debt service is going down, and the proposal right now, which we're going to talk about in, in a couple of slides as we move forward, because you have the capital project in place, hopefully a place to move forward, um, we're going to play a little, um, we're going to do it, hopefully do a transfer between the debt service fund to the capital reserve fund. With all the financing that we did, we planned on using the debt service funds and, and paying down debt, and we plan on using $5 million in capital reserve. All those numbers are there, the money's there. It's just right now there's half a million on this side instead of this side, and we have to move it over. So it's, it's not costing us another half a million dollars. We're really I'm just going to show you the mechanics of moving it from one pot to the next. But it's, a, it's an item that's a, new, um, a big item in the budget this year, which kind of boosts up the overall. So looking at, at uh, the increases again, the major increases, and we'll be doing a line by line, as we, or not line by line, but a better summary with everything together the next time we meet in February. So you can, once we sit down with the operations and maintenance and the instructional pieces and special education and go through all the services, we'll give you a, a, the full budget and the proposals. And by then, we'll know a little bit more about the other side of the equation. So salaries and wages, benefits almost 500000 the debt service decrease we just talked about, transfers to the capital reserve. Most these services tuition, you know, these we'll be looking at it, but we're anticipating some increases because we've again we, we've had some some expensive services um, come uh, be required of the district and some other categories. So right now we're estimating to be close to 1.6 million dollars in increases. Without the capital transfer, it'd be a little <coughs> over million. So the capital transfer is just a flow through. Um, so overall, about a million seventy-one thousand. Some of the good news, and we're still on hold because I'm sorry I didn't ask if you had any questions on anything, or you want to wait till the end so <laughs> <laughs> I can forget what I said. <laughs> okay, um, the tax levy increase is two point seven eight. Um, so that, that includes some growth. It's a 0.78 percentage in the growth and 2% in the CPI. So we're, we can garner another 300000 in the tax levy. State aid right now, um, I'm only throwing in 1%. I'm not hearing good news coming out of Albany. And I know the city of Auburn was out saying that their increase is only like 1.4%, which is not good because they're a high need city. So that's even though the governor says they're putting more money into the high need, high need schools, we don't, I, we don't have the runs yet to know um, how much that is and how much is going to be divvied up by district yet. So those should be out in a couple of days. So we also expect BOCES aid to go up. I added a little bit there because, we're hit, because we have more services in BOCES, I would expect that the BOCES aid will increase as well. So right now, it's an estimate. Uh, we'll know more when the runs come out and you know, when we can work those through. Um, so we do have a shortfall. Well, I'm not going to go to the shortfall at this point from, from state A. Um, if you drop down to the second from the last. Oh, I have this handy tool here. A minute, see? <laughs> Half a million dollars. <laughs> Sorry, they just connected this one. Half a million dollars in debt service to come in. So that's really coming in on one end and just going out. So that'll be just a, an easy transition. If um, we don't get state aid any more than what's expected here, um, we do have reserves to fall back on. We have unemployment reserve. We have um, 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 employee benefits reserve. So we can draw on those should we need to, to be able to um, 
handle some deficit. Hopefully the state aid increment, if it comes in with 3%, that's a couple hundred thousand dollars, you know, we should be in much better shape. Lauren, can you explain the tax levy in, sure. just a, in a little more detail? I'm, sure. I'm not sure what that really means. Oh, tax levy. If we, we have a tax levy right now about 10, 8, it's, a little, it's almost $11 million. So what the tax cap is, it says that you can take up to 2% of CPI, which is the limit. CPI is actually higher. 2% is the limit. And you can take a little bit more if your base has grown and our base has grown by 0.78%. So when you work through the formula- The base meaning what? Oh, your, your uh -huh. assessments. So if you have growth in an area, um, building going on, and, and additional assessments coming on, they have a calculation for the entire region at, um, versus the state as a whole, and then they apply those percentages um, to every municipality and the, and the local government and school districts. So you're allowed to raise taxes for the amount of that base. So if you're if if we had no growth, we would not get that extra 0.78 percent. So we get a look we get to raise taxes on the new growth and then we get to raise tax on everybody up to two percent. So that's what drives a 2.78 and that's a percentage of our total tax levy. Does that make sense? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. So we, is this is a, this assumes, or we already know what the assessed value of all our property is. Oh, this doesn't matter what the assessments are per se, because okay. it's it, it's not the rate that we're talking about. Okay. The assessments could rise and fall, and raise and fall in different um, individual properties or as a whole in comparison to the state. That's a different calculation for state aid. But if your assessment goes from 500, say it goes from 500 million to 100 million, it doubles. Well, that doesn't mean your taxes double. It just means that the money's divided amongst the base. So it could be the same houses, the same businesses. The assessment could double, but that doesn't mean your tax is gonna go up if you kept it level. What it says is, if we're raising $11 million now, we can increase that, what we raise by 2.78%, and we spread it amongst everyone, regardless of where the assessments are. Okay? And, um, let's see, that's 10. So if we need to raise more than 300000 then we have to go over the tax debt. We have to get super okay. majority vote over the tax debt. Okay. Okay. And your current tax levy is $10,808,880, so almost $11 million. Yeah, and a lot of districts have started to do that because they can't stay with it. You know, if you have budgets that are raised going up at 4 to 5% just because of salaries and benefit increases, and your state aid is coming in at one and two, and your tax tax cap is at two, you know, you're running into some trouble. Right. Frankly, you know? we are not yet in that position, though, because we do have yes. reserves to fall back right. on. So the employee contribution reserve is significant. If you were to look at uh, this fiscal's numbers, you'll see that that number's jumped significantly, and we have room to do that. So right now, that's a buffer number. Mm -hmm. um, if state aid comes in greater, then we could lessen that number, but we still have room to work within our revenue stream. Um, and I would definitely advocate that we stay within the cap again. Um, it's too early on at this point to say that we would need to go over that cap. Good. Right. Okay. And that, yeah, and that reserve is almost two million dollars at this point in time. So um, we have some room to work with. So these numbers will change and be adjusted as we get more news, um, and we start looking at. You know, get some better. For the, obviously, the further down the road you get, the more information you get, the better your information is. Um, this is just to show that the debt service has about 2.6 million dollars in it right now, which was earmarked for use in the capital project. Should you move it forward, so 2.1 is needed to handle the debt obligations over time. So we have. Um, another half a million that is going to be moved over to the general fund by bringing it in and then transferring it over. 
So we'll be able to, to keep the capital project still at the level where we don't have to increase taxes for it. You've already saved those monies over these years. So, and so that little, little bit of movement is just to move it from one bucket to the next. You can't go directly from A to C. If we could, it'd be real easy, but we can't. Legally, everything has to come to the general fund and then go back out. So it's it's transparent and visible and, and everyone knows what's going on. And the 2.1 that we're keeping in the debt service to pay obligations are from previous capital projects yeah. that, that we are just paying off over the, the length of that, whatever our loan or was. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and that's all, all built into the schedules from Donegan's office. Right. So um, that's the update right now. Um, we will be, as I said, getting more information as the runs come out for state aid. We'll be doing a little. We'll be doing some more fine tuning in terms of uh, tuition coming in because we will be able to build more for tuition. So, we, but we want to make sure we're not overestimating what we can build back other districts. So, if we have high cost students that are here, that are from another district, we can build them back. So we have a couple years um, of that to take care of, and that'll help help someone. Any other questions? So, so the governor seems to be touting that the state's giving an increase to education mm -hmm. again this year. In the past, if I remember correctly, that was sometimes tied to you had to spend it in a specific category. If you didn't spend it, then you didn't get aid on it. Yes. Is that is that some of that is true? true. Again, you have different buckets. Yes, you have your foundation aid, which is given to you based on last year, pretty much with an increase. Um, that's where the whole the gap elimination. Remember those couple of years of them taking the money away and then they gave it back, and all that's been so somewhat settled. The foundation aid is pretty flat in and of itself now. They're not going back. They're not. They haven't worked on reviving the formulas, and in this political climate, I doubt it will happen anytime soon. Um, then you have your reimbursables, like your BOCES, your textbooks, your software, hardware. Um, BOCES aid is a big one. Building aids reimbursable based on your projects and, and the length of the projects and the type of, of improvements that you made. So the, that's built in over 15 or 20 years, depending on the project. Um, so you sp you're spending that in terms of making your debt payments and getting it back on the other side. And as was mentioned, you're making a little more in building aid than you are paying out in your debt payments right now. So that's another piece that helps build those reserves for you if we set it aside in the, in the future. Um, right now, I think they, it's just going to go into to reducing or eliminating the, the impact, tax impact, on the capital project. But when the governor says, for instance, he's increasing aid by four point some odd percent, that doesn't necessarily mean that across the board our district is just no. going to get four percent more. No, it okay. doesn't. No, and it really depends. Um, BOCES aid. You spend two million, you get your percent. Not the, if you spend two million at BOCES, maybe a million and a half is, is aidable because they have limits. And out of that aidable portion, there's then a portion that's allocable to the district as their percentage they get from state aid. So you, even though your BOCES percentage might be 65%, you may only get 40 or 50. And that's only a percentage of what you spent the prior year. So that can go in big swings across the county depending on what services are purchased. For some districts, it's, it's the big numbers. Any questions? Other questions? Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, this turn Correspondence? <laughs> Ms. Lincoln, any correspondence? Committee reports, policy committee. Um, first reading of the the board policies be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Trumansburg Board of Education hereby approves the first reading of the board policies titled 
policy number 7550, dignity for all students, policy number 5670, records management, and policy number 7552, student gender identity. Would someone on the policy committee like to speak to these, or? Is there nothing to be said? I think based on these were all existing policies, and uh, because we work with Erie when VOCES, they uh, refine that language for us on a uh, yearly basis, and so these were really just clean up in some of the legal language. They eliminated an awful lot of words. Correct. <laughs> Any substantive changes? No. None. None? None. No. Are, are people comfortable accepting these policy changes tonight or would you like to be able to look them over and vote on them on the February 12th meeting? Okay. I would like the, some more time. Okay. All right. We'll accept these as the first reading. Any other questions? No? Okay. <coughs> Boces or Central New York School Board's report, Douglas? Um, yeah, we have quite a bit going on right now. Um, I do want to apologize. I gave you incorrect information about the location of our legislative meeting. It will be at our VOCES. I, I was a little, a little shocked at the Cuga on a dog a bit, but that was the only one that was offered at that point in time. But we will be having it. Um, it will be. I believe it's the fifth. Anyway, I know I forwarded the information to everyone today. Okay. So that information is current and correct. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, both we will have the same two legislators we had previously, uh, Barbara Lifton and um, Chris Fritz. And they do. They get along well together. They have. A great they play discussions. Nice. Yeah, they really play nicely. And actually, we're finding that without having all of the legislators lined up on stage or something, things are a little more relaxed. Unfortunately, we definitely lost two of our our regular attendees. On a re I mean, they're simply not coming anymore. And I think it's largely just because we've been pretty, and we've had some pretty real problems with uh, small schools and finances and they've not been able to find a solution so they are not appearing uh, and as a matter of fact Cuga, i know um onondaga no what's north of onondaga um with lots of water well yeah Oswego is included yes um, they're not even having <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. Uh, so Syracuse currently, and this is from Montia uh, of Rural Schools, uh, Syracuse currently has a program for educators um, teaching them about uh, careers in tech so that um, teachers in all fields, regardless of whether it's tech or history or, or I don't know, math, they're a little more comfortable with what available careers there are in those and able to discuss with students what the options are, what, um, what tech opportunities there are right now in Syracuse. We're still way under um, the, the number of jobs needed in terms of tech, particularly mid-level still. I think it's around 20,000. It's just not moving. Um, so uh, that's a bit of an issue. Uh, we've already discussed foundation aid. Um, and obviously the, the um, I don't know whether the legislators will, but some, some will certainly be crying for a little more aid than the governor has recommended. But I don't hold a whole lot of hope. Um, the governor, of course, will lowball, and the legislature will ask for more. Rural schools, again, I sent you another handout today. Um, David uh, Little has several talking points. I think they're very well thought out. They are specific, of course, to rural schools, but we are indeed classified as a rural school. 
Um, that's yeah, covered by the lifting. Kiyuga um, Onondaga Bosis and uh, the uh, district superintendent and Skinny Atlas both are close to final hires of superintendent, so that's good news. That seems to be going fairly smoothly, even though there is a dearth of superintendents available in, in the area. Um, it's generally felt, we, we had a rather downbeat meeting. We held it at the new facility, which is in Widewaters, uh, Syracuse. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful building in a lovely location with loads and loads of room to grow. But um, I think, as may be the case here, board members are finding that teachers are increasingly um, overworked, uh, a little anxious about their positions, <laughs> um, a little anxious about their students, and not really getting a whole lot of support. So um, they are looking at various ways of, of increasing support for, for teachers and offering um, help where it is needed. Um, let's see. A lot of, as I mentioned earlier, pressure to provide opportunities for learning more about careers and technology in whatever subjects they teach. And both students and parents are requesting a focus on job-related skills um, as opposed to college in many cases, which you know, is neither here nor there. But OK, I mentioned rural schools. Um, oh, and in closing, I guess I should mention that in working on an HVAC um, problem in the culinary school at BOCES, I think it was today, they did start a small fire. Uh, it was primarily smoke damage, not more than that. But I didn't want to reassure everyone that uh, you know, <laughs> no one even had to be removed. They didn't uh, take anyone to another section of the building. But yes, it must have been rather exciting. <laughs> And that's it. Okay. Any questions for Douglas? No, thank you. Okay. I had one just quick. Oh, sure. Um, did you know, do you have a date for that legislative um, night at TSD? I don't think I sent one to myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know it's a Thursday. I think I might have one. Oh, wait a minute. I did write it in my calendar. Uh, um, here we go. Yes, February 8th. Five to seven in the, uh, the big building in the back. Smith School? Hmm? Smith, Smith School? Smith School, Smith School. yeah, uh, left-hand side. Although I don't know what door they'll keep open. It changes every time. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Douglas? Thank you very much. Administrator's report? Yes, uh, I've asked Pam to say a few words this evening about the computer science for all work that we've been doing for the district. Uh, well, just quickly, um, the uh, TST BOCES got a grant, so we took, uh, I took three teachers down to Westchester, and we spent a day learning about CS for All, uh, which is a national group that's trying to bring some attention and light to computer science. Uh, the state is looking at putting some standards together for New York State, so we're looking at possibly having to implement um, some standards here. So we're hoping to, we started to create a, a vision plan of how to move forward with that, and uh, hopefully this summer we'll start to look at the curriculum as it is here and where we are doing computer science already. There's a lot of great computer science things already happening in lots of different pockets, so we're going to try to figure out where those things are and create a whole uh, a new a new curriculum piece for computer science. So we'll start that work probably this summer. Thank you. Questions? <laughs> so so is this like a programming or is this use of computers in the classroom? What, what's yes, the yes and yes. <laughs> yes and yes, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it ranges. K twelve? Uh, Pre-K-12, yeah. Pre-K-12, yeah. pardon me. Yeah. So um, it's, it ranges from, you know, coding to, uh, you know, 
literacy as far as technology goes to um, uh, it's a there's a very wide range and then it goes all the way to like just problem solving and working through step-by-step uh, -step action and working with groups and there's, it's just a really broad uh, wide range of things so we're still learning about what it is is the state's idea that this is now going to become required curriculum they're, they're they're looking moving that in that direction so it's not yet but they're definitely looking at that was there any assistance on sort of getting people up to speed regarding hardware hardware mm -hmm. uh, i haven't heard much about that yeah, um, I know th like this grant that TST got, I think most of the component districts are involved in some way with that. Yeah. So um, we're the hoping- The is that if it's not wired and put together properly, then it's useless. Yeah. And we're having issues <laughs> at this point already. So <laughs> there's only one of Michael to go around. <laughs> not of Michael. Any idea of a timeline in terms of very new in okay. inception. Um, this, this, like I said, this is a national group of, of people that are, are really wanting to bring it to light, particularly for underrepresented groups like with girls. Um, you know, opening it up to so that there's more. It's for all. That's the for all part of it. So that it's more generalized through our curriculum. Is the state looking for certification requirements for teachers in this process? Um, not necessarily. I, they're really just starting to talk about it. So I don't think that it's, that it's going to be a separate certification, but that yeah. it's going to be embedded sort of in what we do. It's just sort of the work that we do. Haven't we heard that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So to be continued. <laughs> we look forward to the next installment. <laughs> John, would you like to step in for the student report, or? <laughs> uh, well, the best update I have for you is just that the girls' JD basketball team just won a sportsmanship award and from, from me, because uh, <laughs> as Joe, if you notice, Joe and I running out of the room, it was because we had a roof leak in the gym. Oh. Make a note for the facilities project. Um, the, the basketball game was, being, was paused because of water on the court due to the roof leak, and so the girls' team from Trumansburg JV and the Lansing JV basketball team was playing uh, along the banks of the river. Or what's the, is that the game? Down by the, down by the bank. They were playing down by the bank. They had a huge circle with both teams in one big circle playing this game together while they were waiting for the court to get get cleaned up. So it was adorable and I just tweeted out a picture of the girls playing. So, oh, how nice. Um, but that's that's the big update. Uh, winter sports are running their running the way they're supposed to and our musical rehearsals are well underway and talent show is this coming Saturday for the music boosters if you have an opportunity come out Saturday and watch some kids from pre-k through 12 doing some really amazing things come on out on Saturday for the talent show support our music boosters what time John? uh if I seven so I, I'm pretty sure it's seven but don't hold me to that Check the website. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other questions for for John? Thank you. Consent agenda. Um, any items that people would like to we'll discuss separately? Um, no. If not, um, um just I'm G. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Those in favor of accepting the consent agenda as presented with the exception of item G. Aye. Aye. Or move. Move. Need to move. Well, do we need to move that? We do. Not, not a, I don't believe we do for consent agenda, oh. but we'll take it. A motion? Acceptance. Okay. Second. Second. All right. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. But we're not discussing. There's the part. Okay. <laughs> those in favor? I got it. I'm sorry. We're a little confused here. <laughs> um, motion carries. Item G. G. May I have a motion to, for the approval of the author, authorization for the superintendent of schools to sign an independent yoga instructor contract with Sadie Frederick. Be it resolved that the Board of Education for the Trumansburg Central School District hereby authorizes the superintendent of schools to sign an independent yoga instructor contract 
with Sadie Frederick as presented. So, Discussion. I just, I'm intrigued by this. How do we use this person? And what's the, I, it's, I know that it's funded through, through healthcare consortium, but what? So we have a wellness effort within the district and the consortium is behind that. So they're allowing each district based on the number of students enrolled and the number of buildings on that campus they um, allot various amounts in funding for the wellness effort. So um, we chose to move forward this year and hire a, a yoga instructor. It's very popular last school year. So it's available to all of our employees every Wednesday from 4 to 5 p.m. from now until the end of the school year. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. It's great to be, you know, to have a stressful day with you know, kids at school and then go with your team to yoga. Like it's <laughs> really, it's really a wonderful thing. Like a team <laughs> Yes. <laughs> How many, what's the capacity of that? Do we know? Where? Um, during it's the in the cafeteria, right? so however. Right. They're usually between like 10, 15 people. Oh, cool. And it rotates people. So it varies. Nice. But we don't limit it. Last year we had a sign up, but we found that that wasn't necessary. If we just say, I mean, we get a notice if there's a cancellation, but. It's just happening every Wednesday, so I think with that consistency, maybe we'll get more and more people to attend. It's in the elementary school? We've been having it in the high school um, cafeteria. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are all three buildings fairly well represented? Administrators. the prize? I would pay them to come. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Ms. Bell regarding this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. All right. New business. No, I'm not reading it all. <laughs> Do I need to, Ms. Bell? And can you can you summarize what this is, or can? For A, it's just a continuation of the seeker process, which the district has already approved for Trumansburg to be the agent. So this is just more of the legal language that's involved in that process before uh, we move forward with a proposal for a capital project to put up for a public referendum. Okay. So this is really all the way down to A. To A. All right. I think B also. It's and, and C and D, yes? Yes. And then the little B is the next one. Right. Okay. A motion to accept the um, seeker um, capital project as presented. So moved. Second. Oops. Do I get, I'm sorry, a question. in terms of like protocol, do you guys vote on it first and then you get, or yeah. do we like get to ask questions and then you vote As soon as we get a motion to vote on it, then we can ask questions Got and it. have discussions. So a second to the motion? Second. Okay. Questions and discussion. So did the district complete a short environmental assessment form for this project? No, this is the, the, form that our architects advise us to fill out because what, what of the type of the action. This form right here? Well, it's not really a form, it's a resolution. Oh, okay, so maybe you guys can walk me through the process. It sounds as though you had to complete a environmental impact or quality review. They're, they're doing that. So the architects themselves are yep. completing the review? Yep. It does, it does not mention that in these notes that the architect is. It sounds as though the district and the Board of Education are the ones that are actually doing, or is it a short environmental assessment form was prepared for, was prepared for the district, but it doesn't state by whom. So you're saying for clarification, it's not the yeah, architect. That's correct, yeah. Okay, that would be nice to include. In the, you can add that. Can we add that now? Okay. We can add that now. Thank you. Can you suggest it? So, State Environmental Quality Review Act resolution regarding, let's see, 
And you guys got to review that and you determined the <coughs> concerns. Is that correct? Am I interpreting that correctly? They, they sent it to us. They sent it to Kim Lee and Lauren. I'm sorry, Joe, I didn't hear it. They did send it to us. It's like a, maybe a one and a half, two page document. So it would be in the paragraph where it says, whereas based upon an examination of 6 NYC RR 617.4, 617.5, the district classified the project as an unlisted action given short environmental assessment form was prepared by Hunt Architects for the project and pursuant to 6 NYC RR 617.6. Okay. It should and it should probably say coordinated review was undertaken by Hunt Architects okay. and the district, and no objections were received. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that mm -hmm. clarification and that point. Other questions or discussion or concerns? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. May have a recommendation for acceptance of the following notice of special meeting of qualified voters of the Trumansburg Central School District. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education for the Trumansburg Central School District, this notice is hereby given that a special meeting of qualified voters of the Trumansburg Central School District shall be held at the Ulysses Historical Society Building, 39 South Main Street, in said district on Tuesday, March 13th. 2018 between the hours of 12 noon and 8 p.m. The following proposition will be submitted for voter approval. Harry, you said South Main. I'm sorry, South Street. I, my apologies. So correction, 39 South Street in said district on Tuesday, March 13th, 2018 between the hours of noon and 8 p.m. The following proposition will be submitted for voter approval at said meeting. So. I'll let each of you read that, it, um, unless you'd like me to go through it or the public would like me to go through it. Thoughts, Ms. Bell? I think it might be important to just read okay. that first. Resolved that the Board of Education of the Trumansburg Central School District is hereby authorized to undertake certain capital improvements consisting of additions to in construction and reconstruction of existing school buildings and facilities site improvements in the acquisition of certain original furnishings, equipment and apparatus and other incidental improvements required in connection therewith for such construction and school use, all at an estimated maximum aggregate cost of $24,997,422 and to appropriate and expend from the existing capital reserve fund $4.5 million for such cost and that the balance of such costs, or so much there, thereof, as many be necessary, shall be raised by the levy of a tax to be collected in annual installments, with such tax to be partially offset by Smart Schools Bond Act funds and other state aid available. Therefore, and in anticipation of such tax, debt obligations of the school district, as may be necessary, not to exceed $20,497,422, shall be issued. So, just to clarify, yeah, translation. <laughs> uh, this is really setting forth the proposal to bring to public referendum Project 1.01, which actually has zero local impact. Uh, Lauren touched on that earlier in the budget presentation. Uh, this project is actually offset by five million dollars. Uh, because 4.5 million comes from the reserve, it is stated in this legal language. The other 500,000 will be offset in what she had stated, will transfer from debt service, bring it into the general fund, and then the Board of Education will make a motion to move that to the capital reserve. So in totality, $5 million will offset this proposal of uh, 20, almost 25 million, and that allows this project to have zero tax impact. Um, to summarize, the project has been on the website. We've talked about it. This process started back in May of 2016. Um, there's been lots of discussion, and really what it gets at are a lot of the health and safety items out of the building condition survey 
and additionally for each building there's a STEM classroom so a new instructional space to meet the needs of our students um, I think that this board and the administrative team and the faculty and groups that have spoken have decided to recommend this proposal to move forward because we are looking at drafting a new vision and mission statement for the district uh, we have Pam who is our new director of instruction uh, so we have a lot of things in motion right now, but we don't necessarily have a clear vision of where we want to be within the next five to seven years. This project will continue to move us forward, take care of those health and safety items that are necessary uh, to make sure our students are educated in a safe environment. And I'm assuming in five years we'll come back to this board again in this community um, under a new vision and ask for a new project that supports those new instructional spaces. So before we have discussion, let's follow Sorry. protocol. No, we, that's a great explanation and we needed that. So, do I hear a motion to take? So moved. And second? second? Okay. Discussion and questions. So just for clarification, this is one of two projects. The other was the, the project 5.0, whatever number it finally ended up being, which was essentially the idea of closing the middle school, combining all three buildings by building a, a new middle school um, to connect the buildings. So acceptance of this obviously precludes the other, but it, it doesn't mean that we're only allowed to vote on this. So if there is discussion or opposition to this, then we can vote no and then come to project 5.0 and discuss that if we'd like to do that. So we're not necessarily eliminating one or the other. We just, for a matter of convenience, put one on the agenda. So, question. So for clarification, has the board already voted on which of the capital projects they want to No, that's forward? what we're doing. So that's what this is? This, okay, is correct. Hmm. Okay. Good clarifying question, yes. It seemed like it might have been a a separate agenda item by itself but okay so right now you guys are voting on which one to move forward we're voting on this one so if okay, we we'll accept it then that's what we have if we reject it then we can discuss 5.0 and accept or reject that or bring 5.0 to, to the next board meeting mm -hmm. yes so I'm curious about um, the plan to uh, get the word out about the vote to the voters. So there's actually a piece that takes place with the architects. So this really um, is the opportunity for the board to decide on a project. If this one we move forward with separately, we would then have one or two public meetings to include the community. And that would include drawings and uh, schematics and a better definition of scope that was more detailed for the community um, prior to a March referendum. So it depends on the project that the board chooses. If the board would choose to go with project 5.05 uh, with the tax impact, I think it was over 9%, then we would also have that same opportunity to share with the community the schematics scope, drawings, and do the public information piece. Um, it's our hope that we would have one or two meetings with the public to display that information, um, get it out so that the voters know what they're voting for or against. Mm -hmm. So, the, Douglas, you look bewildered. No? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Question? <laughs> so there's obviously been a lot of discussion, as um, Kimberly mentioned, this has started in 2016 with um, a public committee to look at a number of options. Um, we certainly have had a number of, of discussions over the past um, two years about this. Um, I'll, I'll just put my opinion out there. Um, in previous meetings, I think I've been pretty vocal about being an advocate for closing the middle school and building in between. Um, but um, my opinion has changed and evolved over the course of the past two years and um, I would be supportive of, of this for 
three reasons. One, it addresses the, um, the building safety um, condition survey issues. If I'm correct, Joe, it addresses all the number one priorities in that and a majority of number twos? Just primarily number ones. One. Okay. So, um, so that is certainly of the utmost importance in terms of the safety of our buildings and maintaining their operational integrity. The second thing is um, I just cannot, despite my enthusiasm for a connected building and, and some of the benefits I personally see to that, in good conscience support a, a 10 percent or almost 10 percent um, increase in the tax levy for a capital project at this time. Um, and finally, we're already looking four years out, five years out before this, four years out before this really comes to fruition. And I think without a solid vision of where we're going and what we're going to do, that spending any more money than the bare necessities of meeting the condi building condition survey and some STEM space development um, over the course of those years, um, I just, I can't support 5.05 any longer. So um, I would be in favor of, of this, but that's just my one opinion. Mm -hmm. so. I concur. I've been to facility meetings and we uh, heard from the administrative team, the principals, the building principals, about their ideas about what they need. And I think one, this this proposal really meets what we can do now. Yeah, I was on the committee as well. Um, not the last two, though. Um, and part of the, it was great hearing from the principals, I think hearing the vision of what um, you know, what they can do already. You know, I think we don't have to wait to build a building to make instructional moves. Um, and so I think that's great that Pam and Kimberly have really been researching a lot of different things and looking at different programs that we can really try to create a model here now. And then, you know, when we really know what we want and have a very pretty clear vision and have a team that's been working together for you know a duration of time we can really have a good idea of what the what the buildings need on this on this campus i think right now it's too soon it's too early with the transition to make big big decisions around project 505 and that tax impact i just don't think that um the, i don't think the community is ready with some of the changes that are happening within the community right now in addition to that tax cap um, but if we can make sure that the, the buildings are safe with the building condition survey, you know, I think we can do our, our due diligence for that survey um, that we have that's probably going to be expired. And, you know, the, the number twos and number threes on that list are going to maybe potentially seep into, um, the, into you know, needing to be fixed before this project is, is complete. So. Um, I'm not, I don't think that because we're not doing a big project that um, requires, you know, really huge vision, I think we're, we're going to be doing that now with, with programs and development from what we have and what we've heard from you, Kimberly. So I think we're in great shape. I actually, I think we're in better shape than we were, um, you know, a few years ago. But I have to say, Hearing from the community and hearing from that, you know, all of the feedback from the community members that participated, uh, you know, that's priceless. You know, hearing what our what our community wants, what our parents want, all of that feedback has been, you know, incredibly helpful. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who put their time in, um, and I think there's just more opportunity, more, you know, more opportunities to get involved in the future. So. Douglas. Um, yeah, Kimberly. Um, at one point, you had mentioned the possibility of possibly sharing tech services, maybe with other schools. So we we currently do uh, technology services. Yes. So, so we contract with the Regional Information Center. The, um, Michael the Bliss is shared, um, and we have two other individuals as well that are shared, and we have one technician that is Correct. a Schumannsburg employee. I was thinking more of space. And you mentioned at one point the possibility of maybe using Watkins Glen. 
So I have connected with a superintendent at Watkins, and it's in the very, very early stages. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about what types of services we mm -hmm. could share, um, because uh, geographically we're located closer yes. together. Yeah. So um, we're also looking at uh, putting some work together, professional development for our administrative team, which would perhaps be aidable because again, it's two schools coming together to share in one right. service. So um, there are some ideas out there. Um, like Sarah mentioned, Pam is doing a lot of work with all of our instructional staff. Um, she and I have both been to, I think, three schools now um, and toured to bring back some best practices, um, some things that we can do in our existing classrooms. Uh, but behind that comes more professional development. So I think before the space comes, um, we need to get behind the work of our teachers. They're doing some fabulous things already, but I think we need to take some things off their plate and give them permission to replace them or just allow some things to fall off and focus on other initiatives. So um, we are doing a lot of work right now, and I don't believe necessarily that it requires new spaces per se. In so, time, yes. So storage is no longer the issue it was once, or we felt. I think we're working within the confines to that because I know at one point that was really a, an issue. Okay. That's good. <clears throat> Thank you. I think one of the things we have to remember is that when we started out, it seemed like an, a good opportunity to take a look critically and objectively at the middle school because if we we're going to have to spend a fair amount of money. And the best thing to do was to make sure are we putting it in a place that we would reap the rewards. And this has been an evolutionary process. Right? It has not been rushed. There have been, as Sarah pointed out, and any number of constituents that have had an opportunity to and have volunteered their time and their opinion. So for watching this process go through an evolutionary process to arrive at this particular solution, I think has really benefited us in sort of what Lewis Carroll said, if you don't know where you're going, it doesn't matter how you get there. <laughs> and Kimberly's wisdom of saying, give us the time to be able to develop where we want our schools to go, where, how we can best serve our children. And one of the really nice things, I think, about this particular proposition, it does not preclude any advances in the future. Technology is evolving at such a rapid rate that even if we were ready, we couldn't keep up with it. So we best need to know what it is that benefits us, not some nice, lovely, shiny thing out there, which I'm as attracted to as anybody else. It's a new toy. But if you can't implement it, which is why the question I asked about Pam, that we're talking a lot about software, but the hardware is becoming as complex. And if we don't have anybody who can understand that, then we have a very expensive, fancy piece of equipment that doesn't work. So this positions us, I think, to be able to not leap into the future, but prepare for it. So I think this is a really sound proposition to present toward the community. Other thoughts, questions? I just want to say I, I appreciate the board um, bringing forth the architects and so many public forums for, for, for people to learn about the different plans. That was very helpful. Um, it really gave us a good understanding of what was on the table and what costs would be associated with it. So thank you for taking the time to do that. Um, and I also agree with Sarah's comment that I don't think the community is ready for a big change right now. The majority of the people I talk to, the idea of knocking down the middle school is just catastrophic. So I think it was probably a, a good idea to think about that a little while. Thank you. Thank you. Hearing no other comments, those in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. So we'll then proceed with then proceed with advertisement and 
and yes. dates for community exactly. forms. Exactly. So, um, stay tuned. We'll have a whole calendar of upcoming dates and public forums and such to get the word out to uh, our community. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm sorry. I'm going to say one more thing, and I promise to be quiet. I um, am curious if there's ever a statement that explains to the taxpayer what it is they would be paying or not paying in this case. So with all these figures and reading it, I'm not sure I would be able to read that and understand that there would be like a 0% tax. So that will actually come with the marketing piece that we do with the architects, and that will be included at least in the two public community forums that we hold, um, where it will be crystal clear that there's zero local impact. So, um, and and that really comes with the clarification, so that people know what they're voting for or against in that at the time of that March referendum. So it'll be much clearer. There will also be drawings, and uh, scope will be hopefully bold pointed. So it's very. Uh, straightforward, very easily understood. Thank you. Thank you. May I have a motion for the acceptance of the donation. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education for the Trumansburg Central School District hereby accepts the donation of three new girl winter coats and three new boy winter coats from the Knights of Columbus to the elementary school to be given to students in need. Okay. Second. Second. Discussion? Questions? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. D. Uh, may I have a motion to accept the, the, the following? Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education, for the Trumansburg Central School District hereby accepts the donation of $199.50 from the TSCD Foundation to the Elementary School Cafeteria Food Service Department. So moved. Second. 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 Questions? Specifically, this is. So unfortunately, I was not at the last foundation meeting, mm -hmm. and you probably just saw me lean over to Tina and say, what grant was that for? <laughs> 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 Kimberly, I think Somewhere it's from Rainbow Salad. Oh, sorry. I think it's from Rainbow Salad. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, I'm on a Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. So thank you to the foundation for supporting the Rainbow Salad Day. Um, some of you may recall oh, yes. today yes. that they were encouraging yep. several days, actually, for each grade level to um, participate in the school lunch program and try a variety of fresh vegetables, build their own salad. So it was a big hit. So thank you to the foundation. Thank you, Megan. Thank you very much. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. I have a motion to accept the following donation, be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education for the Trumansburg Central School District, hereby accepts a donation from William Capel in the amount of $500 to the Elementary School Library to purchase books in memory of Carol Capel. So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? Uh, questions? No, but we all still remember Mrs. Capel. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. A loving gesture and very much appreciated. So, um, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Just before we move on to F, uh, just on behalf of the board, I'd like to say I think that these three donations are um, so um, emblematic and reflective of the generous community that we have and how supportive they are across the board. Um, whether it's individuals or organizations um, within the community. So we thank them greatly and are very appreciative of the support of the community. Item F, um, motion to accept the 2017-18 school calendar alteration. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education for the Trumansburg Central School District hereby approves an alteration to the 2000. 1718 school calendar adding a board of education meeting with muni with municipalities and the Trumansburg Community Recreation Group on Wednesday, March 17th at 6 p.m. at the Trumansburg American Legion Post 770 at 4431 East Seneca Road, Trumansburg. So moved. Um, Second. Seven. 
What did I say? 17. 17. See, I was thinking St. Patrick's Day subconsciously. <laughs> I apologize. March 7, 2018 at 6 p.m. at the Trumansburg American Legion Post 770. So moved. Second? Second. Second. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? <coughs> motion carries. We have a motion for the approval of the following curriculum projects. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education for the Trumansburg Central School District hereby approves the following curriculum projects as presented. So moved. Second? Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. These are our two um, changes to the agenda. Um, may I have a motion for the acceptance of the 2016-17 Extracurricular Activity Funds Corrective Action Plan. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education for the Trumansburg Central School District hereby accepts the 2016-17 Extracurricular Activity Funds Corrective Action Plan as presented. Discussion? Questions? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. May I have a motion to, to accept the approval of the administrative leave? Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education for the Trumansburg Central School District hereby approves the following administrative leave as presented. Questions? Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Which brings us back to open forum. At this time, we'd like to give district residents an opportunity to ask any questions about this agenda or about operations within the school district. Personnel matters will not be addressed in public session. Comments may be recorded and responded to by the Board of Education or the Superintendent of Schools within 24 to 48 hours. We ask that you introduce yourself to the board and that you keep your comments to five minutes or less. Hearing none again, we'll move to board forum. Um, so I had asked that we just put on, uh, again, update about our uh, decision-making process and timeline for search for uh, superintendent, permanent superintendent of schools. We had and have stated at previous meetings that um, we would make a decision at the end of January and, and we didn't take into account when we said the end of January that our board meeting is either tonight or into February. Um, but um, our options as we had talked about uh, would be at whichever date, either tonight or February 12th. Um, uh, would be to decide to go out for a search for a new superintendent, um, appoint our current interim superintendent, um, and then th decide if we went out for a search, um, how extensive that search would be, and who we would hire um, to facilitate that search. Um, my thought is that since we have publicly said that we would not make this decision until um, the end of January that I would opt to vote and delay it until February, our February 12th meeting um, so that we're not short-circuiting the process and not depriving anyone of sharing their opinion with board members um, as to how they feel we should proceed. But There's again, one person. Yeah. So anybody interested to So, yeah yeah so um, I would encourage people uh, in the community if they have thoughts on how they feel the board should proceed in terms of a search for a permanent superintendent that they share that um, with the Board of Education members either through email or personal conversation um, that if I'm reading correctly that we will then um, make that decision as to how to proceed um, at our next meeting, which is February 12th. Okay. Any other 
members for board have items for board form. Okay. Hearing none, then I would like a motion to adjourn to executive session for matters relating to the dismissal or removal of a particular person or persons. We're adjourned to executive session. We will not be returning to conduct any other business tonight in public forum. So thank you very much.